Good evening, everybody. I'm going to call the September 20th, 2022 meeting of the Yucca Valley Town Council to order. May we have a roll call, please? Council members Abel. Here. Dennison. Here. Droz. Here. Lombardo. Here. And Mayor Schooler. Here. We've met and the council met in closed session a little while ago. Uh, do we have a report on our closed session? Sure, thank you. The uh, town council met in closed session uh, with respect to all of the items that are on the closed session agenda and there's no reportable action. And that concludes the report. Thank you. If you'll all rise and join me in the pledge to our flag followed by an invocation led by Pastor Bill Wilcox. Ready, begin. I, I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let us pray. Almighty God, maker of the universe and creator and sustainer of life, we come to you this evening and to thank you for another day you didn't promise us and to convene the work of this council by asking for your blessing. As we begin, we join the people of the United Kingdom this evening in mourning the death of Queen Elizabeth II. We thank you for her service to her country and to the rest of the world. And we thank you for the example of her faith and decency in the face of an often cynical, self-serving, and destructive world. May her family know the comfort of Jesus as they grieve their loss. As you know, Father, it is always on my heart when I come to these council meetings to pray for the work of the council and the town staff. I pray you grant them a unity of purpose as they serve the needs of the people of Yucca Valley. Also on my heart this evening, Father, to ask for the protection and effectiveness of our many first responders, law enforcement, fire suppression, emergency medical services, and search and rescue. Please keep your loving hand of blessing and protection on them all. And finally, dear Lord, I pray for the children of Yucca Valley in these tumultuous times of moral uncertainty. Please protect our children from the predators who would seek to do them harm. Bless their teachers with wisdom and insight to provide clear direction and the tools they need to function well in our community. And may we all live by the golden rule that in everything we would treat others the same way we want them to treat us. In the name of our Savior Jesus, amen. 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 Well done. Thank you. That was Pastor Bill Wilcox of Living Hope Church in Yucca Valley. Presentations, any presentations this evening? Seeing none, no. We move on to uh, the approval of the agenda. We have a motion. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to approve tonight's agenda. I would like to second that. Council, Council Member Members Drose, second. Abel? Yes. Dennison? Yes. Droz? Yes. Lombardo? Yes. And Mayor Schooler? Yes. The consent agenda. All items listed on the consent agenda are routine matters or formal documents covering previous town council instruction. Items are enacted by one motion and a second without separate discussion unless a member of the town council or town staff requests dialogue on a specific item at the beginning of the meeting. Requests for public comment on the consent agenda items should be filed with the town clerk. Does any member of the public have any comments on a consent agenda item? Bringing it back to council, any council members wish to pull any items for discussion? I'll any move none? we accept the consent agenda as printed. Mayor, I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Council members Abel? Yes. Dennison? Yes. Droz? Yes. Lombardo? Yes. And Mayor Schooler? Yes. Item number eight, department reports, termination of the proclamation of a local emergency due to COVID-19. Mayor, have a staff report on that, please. Good afternoon, Mayor, Council. 
The subject before you is the termination of the proclamation of a local emergency due to COVID-19 and the repeal and revision of related policies. The recommended action is that you adopt a resolution terminating the local emergency proclamation resulting from the COVID-19 pandemic originally proclaimed by the Town of Yucca Valley Town Council on March 17, 2020. Repeal in its entirety the 2019 Novel Coronavirus Local Emergency Policy and the Temporary Telecommute Policy. And three, adopt the revised COVID-19 Prevention Plan. So if you recall on March 17, 2020, in response to the growing COVID-19 pandemic, the Town Council adopted resolution number 20-07, proclaiming a local emergency within the town of Yucca Valley. On April 14, 2020, the Town Council determined that that uh, local emergency still existed within the town and adopted resolution number 2012. Then again, on June 2nd, 2020, the, count, the town council determined that the local emergency was still in existence um, within the town of Yucca Valley and adopted resolution number 2028. And then finally, on July 21st, 2020, the town council adopted resolution number 2048 and determined that the local emergency continued to exist within the town of Yucca Valley and that the proclamation would remain in place without review until its termination was proclaimed by the town council in accordance with the executive order of the governor of California. So as a result of the local emergency that was adopted in March uh, of 2020, the town council adopted the 2019 Novel Coronavirus Pandemic Local Emergency Policy on March 31st 2020, and subsequently the temporary telecommute policy on June 3rd, 2020. Both policies were developed and, impl and implemented to address how businesses would conduct uh, their business during the adopted local emergency. On January 19th, 2021, the Town Council adopted a COVID-19 prevention pro program known as the CPP that was required by the recently implemented Cal OSHA Emergency Temporary Standards. The CPP is still in effect and is updated when additional guide guidelines are received from Cal OSHA. And as a reminder, some of the items that are included in the CPP are things like identifying and evaluating employee exposure to COVID-19 health hazards, implementation of effective policies and procedures to correct unsafe and unhealthy work conditions, such as physical, um, safe physical distancing, modifying of workplaces, and staggering work schedules. Um, also providing some personal protective equipment um, to use uh, during uh, work in order to prevent exposure in the workplace, such as masks and gloves and that type of thing. And then to also provide training and instruction to employees on infection prevention techniques. The town manager, while serving as the director of emergency services, has determined that the emergency conditions of extreme peril no longer exist and therefore the continuation of the local emergency proclamation to and for the COVID-19 pandemic is no longer needed. Consequently, it is re recommended that the town council terminate the existence of a local emergency in accordance with government code section 8630D and repeal the 2019 Novel Coronavirus Local Emergency Policy and the Temporary Telecommute Policy. The COVID-19 Prevention Program will remain in effect and has been revised on page 13 to include language related to the, con the continuation of the town paid leave policy through June 30th of 2023 unless terminated sooner at the discretion of the town manager. Again, the recommended action for you is that the town council adopt a resolution terminating the local emergency proclamation resulting from the COVID-19 pandemic originally proclaimed by the town of Yucca Valley on March 17, 2020. Two, repeal in its entirety the 2019 Novel Coronavirus Local Emergency Policy and the Temporary Telecommute mm -hmm. Policy. And three, to adopt the revised COVID-19 Prevention Plan. With that, I'd be happy to answer any questions following public comment. Mayor, uh, if I might, thank you, Jessica, for that uh, information. Just a couple other quick thoughts on this. Uh, the president's comments notwithstanding about the pandemic being over, that's not the reason this is before you tonight. Um, we probably would have brought this forward uh, much sooner simply because the operational aspects of the pandemic did not seem to warrant a continuation. However, there were also a number of funding sources that were uh, tied in with the pandemic over the course of the last two and a half years. 
And through that, we wanted to ensure that the town remained eligible for any funding that may come either through state funding or federal funding sources. So uh, it looks like with the ARPA funds being distributed already and the state having done what they've done, uh, it, it does not appear that the town is going to be eligible for any other substantial funding sources, number one. So that was really the last reason we've, we've kept this uh, open as long as we have. And then always a reminder that uh, should the pandemic turn and something occur and it needs to be reinstated, the council always has that ability to reinstate that as needed. So thank you, Mayor. All right, thank you. Is there any member of the public that wishes to comment on this item? Anyone online? No. With that, we'll bring it back to the council for discussion or a motion. Council member. Okay. I'd just like to make one comment. Uh, I want to thank staff uh, for you know overseeing uh, our protocols that we put into place for this and also all of our crews and how they've been working together to make sure that we were successful in our community and we mitigated any issues that we had. And I think our outcome was very good because of our adherence to these guidelines. And it was a lot of work. I remember everybody was disrupted. Everything changed really quickly. But um, everybody uh, bought into our program, and it, I believe it was very successful. And I just want to thank everyone for all the change in managing that disruption and being still very productive. I just want to echo that. Um, a lot of effort expended. It's time for it to come to a close. I'm happy to see that happen. Um, and uh, I'd be happy to make the motion if uh, any other comments. comments? Okay, we have a motion. I would like to make the motion to adopt resolution number 22, terminating local emergency proclamation. <clears throat> and I would like to repeal in its entirety the 2019 novel coronavirus local emergency policy and the temporary telecommute policy and adopt and the revised COVID-19 prevention plan as prepared. Thank you. We have a second. I'll second. Council members Abel? Yes. Dennison? Yes. Droz? Yes. Lombardo? Yes. And Mayor Schooler? Yes. Moving on to item number nine, our fiscal year 2021-22 Public Works Annual Report. Mayor and Council, we'd like to invite up this evening <clears throat> the um, supervisors for streets, parks, and facilities to provide the council with their annual report for 21-22. The recommended action this evening is that the council receives and files the 21-22 Public Works Annual Report. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to the staff so that they can update the council on their activities for this past year. So it's Town of Yucca Valley Town Council meeting 2021-2022 Public Works Administrate Public Works Annual Presentation September 20th, 2022. Wrong button. <laughs> the recommendation is that the town council receives and files the 2021-2022 public works presentation and report. Hello, Mayor, Town Council, citizens and staff. My name is Robert Adams and I am the Street Maintenance Supervisor for the Town of Yucca Valley. I'll be presenting the Street Maintenance section along with the Fleet Maintenance section of the Public Works Annual Report. The Town Street Maintenance crew has three skilled maintenance worker two positions and one supervisor position. They are a highly dedicated team with the responsibility to maintain 150 miles of pavement and 2.58 miles of dirt roads within the town limits. The street crew maintains 2.58 miles of dirt roads on the Mesa. Those dirt roads are maintained and graded on average three times a year. Rainstorms can cause additional erosion damage requiring supplemental maintenance. The most requested service of the street section is pothole repair. Pothole repair is done on a daily and weekly basis, depending on the schedule and requests. Pothole repair is a continuous maintenance issue. Some of the ways potholes get reported from the citizens is by phone, electronically, the front counter, or reporting them to the employees in the field. 
The first step in pothole repair is to clean out all the loose debris from the repair area. Pothole repair can be completed systematically in each of the town's 17 maintenance zones. That's a 50 pound bag of asphalt that Caleb is using to repair that pothole. And depending on the number of potholes filled in one day, 40 to 60 bags or 2,000 to 3,000 pounds of asphalt are used in repairing the potholes. The asphalt will get compacted and then vehicles can immediately drive on the new asphalt. Sign repair, sign replacement and new sign installation is completed on an as needed basis. Citizens request for sign repair is one of the ways we get informed when signs are missing or damaged. This is an extremely helpful resource that can lead to quick repair of town signage. The street crew maintains approximately 3,500 traffic signs and 1,500 street name signs. Gang type graffiti on traffic signs is an unsightly problem that needs to be addressed as soon as possible. An anti-graffiti coating can be installed on new signs. However, the price increase doubles the cost of each sign and our desert sun is very harsh on those anti-graffiti coatings resulting essentially in no savings to the town. Requests to repair sidewalks are evaluated on an individual basis. The left is a picture of a buckled sidewalk that was on Onaga Trail, or excuse me, that's on uh, actually State Route 62. The right picture is the same sidewalk after the concrete repair. There are five school locations within the town limits that get their pavement markings repainted on a yearly schedule. There is a total of 13 crosswalks at three schools with a total of 4,160 linear feet of crosswalk that get repainted yellow every year. The freshly repainted crosswalk stands out bright yellow to alert motorists that they are in a school zone. There are a total of 17 schools and two slow school crossings that get a fresh coat of paint prior to the start of each school year. There are several locations townwide that the red curb is repeated, or excuse me, is repainted yearly. An electric paint sprayer and generator is rented each year for two weeks to complete the refreshing of the pavement markings. 371 linear feet of red curb will get repainted yearly. This is one of the several red curb sections at the Yucca Valley High School that gets repainted every year before the school starts. Directional arrows will keep traffic flowing in the correct direction. And that's the picture after it's been refreshed. There are six speed radar units in school zones that the street crew programs at the beginning of each school year to operate while school is in session. Six new radar units have been purchased this year and are awaiting delivery. The computer components that operate these units have an expected lifespan of seven years. Currently, they are no longer supported by the manufacturer, necessitating their replacement. There are 12 flashing amber lights in school zones that the street crew programs also at the beginning of each school year. Maintenance repairs such as welding must be completed at our public works yard. With some of the narrow lanes that we have, traffic control is necessary for the safety of the citizens and the employees working in the field. The street crew maintains or schedules the maintenance of the town's fleet of 71 different transportation items. The street crew has the tools and knowledge to repair certain items in the field, like a flat tire on a piece of equipment. The town of Yucca Valley recently had two significant rainstorms, one on the 16th of August and one on the 11th of September of this year. They both caused dangerous flooding and deposited sand and debris in the streets. Over the next several slides, I would like to take a little bit of time to expand and describe a little more in detail about the steps the street crew takes during and after a rainstorm. During rainstorms, flooded steins are installed throughout the town where flooding issues exist. The town has approximately 45 to 50 flooded signs mounted to barricades like this one on the screen. They are kept ready to distribute wherever they are needed at flooded locations throughout the town. 
The first item after a storm is passed is the street crew operates the heavy equipment to remove the thick sand and debris from the roadway, allowing traffic to pass safely and prepping the road for sweeping. The equipment operator, operator will then use sand and debris to fill nearby erosion issues or citizens request. The remaining sand and debris will be piled in a safe location for removal after all the roads have been cleared. The next slide is a short little video of street crew equipment operating, operator scraping the sand and debris into a pile removal on Yucca Trail. Here's, next one is another slide of after he's piled it up, then they go ahead and remove it from the roadway. The next step is to remove the piles of sand and debris that was scraped up from the roadways. These piles can be from 60 to 100 cubic yards of sand in each pile. This is Paxton Road at Rome Court, which is just east of 247. And there was three piles there, although there's a picture, there's two piles. The average yard of sand can weigh 2,500 pounds. So these piles you're looking at there can weigh anywhere from 150,000 pounds to 250,000 pounds. And here is one more video. You see how thick the dirt is there. The dirt that is removed will be used to fill in eroded locations around town. After clearing the roadways of the heavy debris, sweeping operations will start. The town of Yucca Valley currently uses a contractor to sweep streets after rainstorms. This enables the town to keep costs of sweeping low while having the availability to add extra sweepers as needed. The major arterials are the first roads to get swept. It takes a total of 58 working days to sweep the 158 miles of pavement in town. This is an average of 2.6 miles per day with one sweeper. With two sweepers, the miles swept per day increases from 2.6 miles to 5.2 miles per day. After the major arterials are swept, the remaining sweeping is done zone by zone in each of the 17 maintenance zones around town. The heaviest hit zones typically get swept first. Shoulder maintenance after rain events help preserve the current drainage flow lines while protecting the asphalt edges of the roadways. Twenty-one vehicles are used by town employees daily to complete their assigned tasks. Twenty-seven different pieces of specialized equipment are used throughout the year to perform various maintenance tasks. This concludes the street section of the Public Works Annual Report. I'd like to turn it over the presentation to Rusty Scott, the Parks Maintenance Supervisor. Hello, Mayor, Council and staff. I'm here to present the Parks Division Annual Report. The town parks maintenance crew has three maintenance worker two positions, one maintenance worker one position, and one supervisor. They are highly dedicated team members of over 65 combined years, working for the town of Yucca Valley, operating seven days per week, year round. 
We have stepped up our aerating program this year to help reduce water usage and to improve the overall health of our fields. Our main responsibilities include 19 acres of turf at the parks and town facilities, an irrigation system that allows us to monitor the usage and alert us of system deficiencies. Uh, we use almost 32 million gallons a year on our fields in turf and landscaping, and we have 250 irrigation valves. Uh, we take care of parking lot striping and maintenance, pool maintenance, vandalism repair, litter and trash cleanup, playground inspections, maintenance and repairs. This is us replacing the field lighting lenses after being shot out by a BB gun at Tri-Valley Little League. A fertigation system is being installed at nine different sites. This will help us save water and improve turf quality. Areas to receive fertigation are the three turf zones at the community center, Brim 1, Brim 2, Tri-Valley Little League, Paradise Park, Macros Park, and Essig Park. In the parks division, we maintain eight park sites in Tri-Valley Little League complex. This is Brim 1. I have two acres of turf, a softball infield, landscaping, and restroom maintenance. This is the infield at Brim 1. In all, we have nine different infields we maintain. Brim 2, four acres of turf, landscaping, restrooms, playground equipment, and the Miracle League maintenance. Um, mainline breaks of Brim 2 can be quite challenging. It's a six inch mainline, it's really deep, and for some reason the ground seems to be shifting over there, and we tend to be doing that a lot. <clears throat> Remembrance Park, landscaping, irrigation, vandalism, and vehicle damage. This is an area where a vehicle drove through the, the east end of the park, um, it damaged the, the shrubs and the irrigation and it all had to be replaced and uh, turned out pretty good. Jacobs Park, we have four tennis courts, landscaping, restrooms, maintenance, uh, playground equipment, two small baseball diamonds, a lot of open space and a retention basin. We're preparing to resurface our tennis courts at Jacobs Park. And we have th three basketball courts, actually four basketball courts, but three of them are being resurfaced. Um, we're looking at the same surfacing for the basketball courts to reduce slipping and uh, improve the appearance of the courts. Essig Park, two and a half acres of turf, landscaping, irrigation, restrooms, playgrounds, and a dog park. This is a very popular park. We are considering numerous improvements for the dog park portion. The poor turf, walking paths, and lack of shade are all areas that are being looked at. We will also be replacing two of the damaged shades on the two to five year old playground equipment set. Macros Park, 1.5 acres of turf, irrigation, softball, infield, restrooms, playground equipment, two half-court basketball courts and several special events. It's a very popular park, but doesn't quite get the usage that some of our other parks get. Paradise Park, a um, little less than an acre, landscaping acre of turf, landscaping irrigation, restrooms, playgrounds, two full-court basketball courts and one pickleball court. This is also one of the basketball courts here that we're going to resurface. Community center, we have five acres of turf, softball, infield maintenance, restrooms, playgrounds, hardscape, and special events. This is our uh, snow play day we do around Christmas time. Um, this is us cleaning it up afterwards on Monday. This is uh, Tri-Valley Little League. Um, they have four infields there. Um, we installed water lines to um, help us in, um, maintain those infields, the clay. Um, it was very much needed. They were, we didn't have any way to get water out, out there before that. And our newest park, our newest 
renovated park, uh, North Park. That's the restroom building parking lot. Uh, it's recently completed as asphalt parking lot with an asphalt road leading up to it. The park also consists of a restroom building and 500 feet of new trail leading back to the existing trails. The Welcome Center, maintenance and irrigation system, landscaping, weed abatement, litter control, hardscape maintenance and pruning are needed weekly. Public works yard, kind of the same thing, landscape irrigation. Um, park and ride had a couple areas of overgrown shrubs that were damaged and needed re uh, replacement. Um, that's us pulling that stuff out. Animal shelter, trees, shrubs, irrigation care, weed abatement. The new branch library, um, landscape irrigation, litter control. Litter and weed abatement is performed weekly at this site. We've recently taken back over the Highway 62 medians for the last year. Um, that's us maintaining the, the landscape ones. <coughs> the outer highways, um, with the help of the street crew, we've been keeping them cleaned up, weed abate, weeded and erosion control type stuff. This is the lot behind uh, the new library building. We used it for parking at the, the Christmas um, tree lighting ceremony. Um, it was in pretty bad shape, but um, we got it cleaned up and we use it when we need to for parking and, and such. Graffiti, uh, unfortunately, it's a, a problem at all our park sites. Uh, we take care of it as soon as we see it. Illegal dumping, unfortunately, that's a problem at several of our park sites. Um, we're looking at different things to do to these type sites to get them more contained, a little bit, uh, uh, make them lockable and put a, uh, some sort of lid on there to keep this from happening. We're looking at a couple different things to do with that stuff. That's our main pump at the pool. After 12 years of surface, the main pump needed to be replaced. And that's the, the new pump and motor, or rebuilt pump, new pump and rebuilt motor. The main pump and the, the new main pump and rebuilt motor at the community center, or at the community pool. We pull out the motor every three years during the off season and have it rebuilt to reduce downtime during the season. And that concludes the park section of the Public Works Annual Report. I would like to turn it over to the presentation to James McCuban, the Facilities Maintenance Supervisor. Hello, Mayor, Town Council, staff, and guests. I'm the Facilities Maintenance Supervisor for the Town of Yucca Valley, and I'll be presenting the facilities portion of the, pres the annual report. The Facilities Maintenance Division consists of three full-time employees and two part-time employees. Uh, we perform uh, room rental setups, tear downs of facilities five to seven days a week. Facilities also performs touch up painting, uh, electrical maintenance, plumbing maintenance, floor maintenance at all town buildings. Facility staff also assist with setups and tear downs for holiday events such as the 4th of July concert, fireworks display, chamber music at the museum, craft fair, Halloween spectacular, Christmas food giveaway. Uh, regarding COVID-19, uh, with, uh, with the uh, return to more normal activities as COVID-19 has receded, uh, we're still implementing a few procedures still in place, sanitizing the rooms and all the equipment used, such as mats and the tables and everything before and after all the events, and uh, high traffic areas throughout the day, just as precaution continuing forward. 
facilities division manages several contractors. Desert Arc assists us with maintaining park bathrooms and cleanups at some of the parks. We've had Santa Fe maintenance that help us cleaning the offices at the uh, town hall, the community center, the, the museum, the senior center, and the public works offices. Honeywell helps us maintain over 225 tons of air conditioning at all the park buildings, or all the town buildings, and as well as local locksmiths, electricians, and plumbers as needed. <coughs> Facility staff also works with other town staff on projects. We recently refinished the floors at the Welcome Center. That's a before picture there. Uh, we we're a little bit worried there that we wouldn't be able to quit that quite uh, cleaned up there, but it turned out pretty good as you can see on the right. Uh, it took about 10 hours of work there. Uh, staff really worked diligently at getting, diligently at getting that uh, accomplished. Senior Center kitchen upgrades uh, was in process as I came on board here. Uh, you know, they got new epoxy floors, new sinks, new shelving uh, to help the kitchen with the uh, organization and a little more, have things flowing a little better. They got new refrigeration units. The one on the left is the old one, was replaced by two units. They have a lot more storage. You can see right there, it was kind of uh, cramped in there. They add stuff all the way up to the fan units, which kind of inhibits the flow of air through there and, and uh, reduces efficiency in there. But now it's a lot cleaner, a lot nicer looking, more efficient. Facilities and staff installed 40, 44 new sound dampening panels at the senior center to help mitigate uh, the acoustical issues in that room. It was very uh, loud in there. Uh, all those panels on the ceiling there, six in each bay and 28 on the walls to help mitigate those acoustical issues there. We recently had, uh, in the last year, new air conditioning system installed at the museum. We replaced a single uh, system with four new split system units and a uh, rooftop package unit that provides a lot more flexibility in maintaining the air in there, a lot more efficient, a lot better control with the different zones in the room. We recently worked with the uh, rec staff. They ordered some new control components for all the scoreboards at the community center and Tri-Valley Little League, and we installed all the control boards, so all the scoreboards are now functional and operating correctly with new, new control units. North Park bathroom here, uh, facility staff assisted in selecting fixtures and installing locks on the new building at the park and that's all up and open and everything's operating well. We've been working with uh, the team on the Prop 68 Aquatic Center providing input on, on maintenance and operation issues and security issues to make sure everything is uh, covered there. We also recently had new cameras installed at Town Hall, Community Center and the museum and that's kind of a look from where they can kind of monitor, see everything that's kind of going on there, all the footage we have. As you know, vandalism is a persistent issue here as well, and facility staff deals with these issues as they arise. And we are hopeful that the new cameras will allow us to mitigate some of these issues. That was a recent uh, break on the window over here at the Choya room. Some kids tossed a rock through there. Coordination is key with all different user groups returning and meeting special events. Flexibility and customer service are top priorities here. Over the period of one year, the average number of setup and teardowns is over 5,000, 90% here at the community center. We look forward to the future and meeting the expectations of the community. 21 town buildings totaling more than 75,000 square feet of indoor space. Sweeping, mopping, waxing of 26,000 square feet of floor tile, vacuuming and cleaning 18,300 square feet of carpet, 
washing 6,000 square feet of glass, cleaning 50 plus toilets and urinals, care and servicing of 245 doors and 700 light fixtures, 5,256 set up and tear downs annually. Recommendation that the town council receives and files the 2021-2022 public works presentation and report. Madam Council, in addition to the supervisors who gave an excellent presentation this evening, I want to recognize a few others that are sitting out in the audience this evening that are part of the public works team. Caleb, Stephen, Ron, and Joe, um, thank you for being here this evening, showing your support for the team and those efforts that you provide. Impressive. Okay, well, thank you for, a, for an excellent report. It's just amazing what you guys do with uh, relatively little staff and the use of contractors, but every year it's uh, very impressive. Uh, we would ask now that uh, if there's any member of the public that wishes to comment on this, uh, this item, this is your chance. Nobody online either. Bring it back to the council, Council Member Lombardo. Very impressive. Um, thank you for the presentation. Great, uh, great presentation. It just brings attention to how much you guys really do all year long and uh, how you're there during the events that happen for the town that are planned and for the emergency events like floods and rainstorms that wash some of the desert sand into our roadways and looks like a lot of work and we appreciate it, every bit of it. Thank you so much. Council Member Droz. Um, it might sound repetitive year after year, but I'm just amazed at what all of you do. It's pretty incredible. Um, and the attention to detail, there's just so much. And when I think of just me alone maintaining my own yard and all of you maintaining the whole town, it's, it's incredible. And there's not a lot of people, so I think it's really uh, incredible. So thank you, Robert, Rusty, and James so much. And also Caleb, Stephen, Ron, and Joe. I appreciate all you, all of you do, what all of you do. Um, and Robert, I always call Robert the highway man because um, he maintains the highways. But anyway, um, uh, whoever can answer this question, the buckled sidewalk I saw. I didn't see a tree near there. What buckled that sidewalk, or was it a tree? It wasn't a tree. A lot of it is the, exp the heat and the um, freeze that we have. That it, the concrete expands and contracts, and sometimes when it expands, it stays expanded and buckles up like that, and creating a tripping hazard. Interesting. Okay, well, thank you so much, and thanks hazard. for all that you do. Thanks a lot. Councilmember Abel. Yeah, this is my favorite report of the year. I always look forward to this. It's amazing, and we're always uh, so appreciative of all the hard work of the men and women that are working here at the town. Uh, James, uh, I was just so impressed with the uh, before and after of the Welcome Center floors. I mean, it looked like a new installation versus a, a cleanup, but it was uh, amazing the difference. And it's one of those things where you come in and you just don't notice it until it's polished up and clean. So 10 hours worth of work, but boy, it looked like a brand new floor. So. Thank you for that. That was amazing. Um, uh, with Rusty, um, man, I, it's like we should, uh, I don't know if there is, I know they have like different competitions they have, like bus rodeos and stuff like that for like school bus drivers and all that. We should be in a competition with like size uh, municipalities and the best turf management. I think we would win the award year after year. I'm concerts at the park. You know, I just can't keep my hands and feet off that grass. And 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 then we just keep throwing new things at you, like you know, uh, little league parks and things like that, or like uh, have been uh, neglected for a number of years. And and your staff is just amazing. And I think we would be winning some awards. I know they give out awards for clean air and for water safety and savings and stuff like that. So I think we should try to get you in a competition with other municipalities. A reality show. Yeah, some reality show. Yeah. Maybe we can follow you around, make some money on that. Um, the the uh, couple things, one is uh, the library. The library always consistently looks amazing. 
I mean, it's such a focal point in town and it just doesn't look like it ever changes, but that's because you're always out there, your crew's always out there maintaining it and keeping it uh, looking fresh and new. Uh, so often we see these brand new shopping centers go in and everything looks so pristine and wonderful and then it just slowly deteriorates and we need to deal with that. But for us, uh, you guys just do an amazing job. Essex Park is, is just a home run. I remember when we sort of built that park and people were like wondering if anyone's gonna use it. It's sort of out of town a little bit. It's been a huge success story and so well used and, and used by so many people and a variety of people. And I know there's challenges with highly used parks, like especially when you're inv involving dogs and so forth. So uh, anything that we can do to continue to improve that park, I think we get a good return on our investment because so many people use it. And it's, it's really just amazing. And the views from there are just, Fantastic, so um, I, I appreciate all that. Anything we can do on the medians? Again, I think we need to probably look at your suggestions maybe on some redesign on hardscaping, some more of those areas that really don't take native plants very well or it's just an uphill battle. So any input you can give the staff or, or the or management or whatever on how we can maybe cut down on the amount of maintenance, maintenance on those areas would be uh, greatly appreciated. Uh, it can still look uh, attractive with hardscaping. So it doesn't always have to be tur or, or ground that has to be you know weeded and, and those types of things. Um, but amazing, amazing. Um, and then Robert, um, do you ever like identify, I mean, at one point we identified Church Street in Onaga as a repetitive problem with dirt coming down from rains and so forth and coming out onto Onaga. And then finally we addressed it by paving Church Street all the way up. And now you don't have crews there every rainstorm. Hopefully you are, are able to identify certain areas that you're like, are we out here again? If, they would, if we would just invest in curb and gutter or pavement or something, to where you don't have to do the repetitive moving sand at the same spot. We, again, really appreciate any input you can give uh, to the council so that we can maybe make some investment and help cut down on some of the, the labor that we guys, uh, that you guys have to repeatedly do. So again, I think employees that are on the front lines are the best people to survey and get ideas from and, and, uh, and share, and it ends up costing or saving us monies uh, by making some adjustments or some repairs so we don't have to use our labor over and over again for the same problems. So again, thank you so much. I'm always impressed and this is my favorite report. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. I'd have to echo the same thing. It's always my favorite report. I really enjoy the logistics of what you guys do and the skill it takes to be successful doing that. Um, I was most impressed though recently uh, was a great example of emergency support, emergency services support. You know, our, our, uh, our police and fire services and EMS services would not be able to accomplish what they do without having those roadways available to our residents. And um, the storms that we had uh, really put a lot of debris in the roads, a lot of intersections. I actually saw a few people in one particular uh, was on Pueblo, uh, just between uh, Aleda and um, Valley Vista, completely flooded out, water was rushing down, and the car pulls up and stops. And I'm going, what's he going to do? Backed up and turned around. So the signs that you put up there remind people of how important it is to turn around, to be safe. I'm hoping they made it to their destination, but you guys had that cleaned up shortly the next day. Uh, you, you know, it was still a mess. But over the next few days, it got cleaned up, got swept, and got cleaned. And your crews and, and you uh, all out there putting in the extra time to do that. And I just can't thank you enough for pulling that off, you know, getting it taken care of. That is important to us. Keep those roads clean and available, you know, to provide public safety. Um, Rusty, the parks, as you heard, I was the same way. Get down there uh, to the concert in the park and... It's the only place you see kids running around barefoot, little kids, having a great time, and no one's stepping on goat heads. Nobody's crying. They're all loving it, and the parents are doing the same thing. But that's throughout the parks. You know, and that's, there's a lot of things that have to happen to make that work. But you do. And like you were doing the aeration there, you've got the new... Uh, uh, the new fertilizer systems being installed to help us use water better. So we're looking at it as a whole package. And I think last year you talked, it was about 20 acres, something like that, of turf. Uh, that's just unbelievable. It's a lot of turf to maintain, and you guys do an, an amazing job taking care of that. I was kind of concerned, though, um, 
maybe uh, we could talk about what, maybe there's some resolve or something to do with the, the mains that are breaking. Those are pretty large, two and a half inch, you said? Six inch. Oh, six inch below the, below the ground. And that, that trench looked pretty deep. Oh, no, they're five feet down, six inch PVC. That's oh, a big piece yeah, it's a lot of water. So it's, <laughs> it's not good that they're breaking mass. underground because that no, seems like it could be. It's kind of, you know, for a newer park, it's not unusual because the ground settles. And hopefully we're finding them all now and it's not going to be an ongoing problem. Well, thanks for mitigating it and coming up with a plan and keeping it going. Uh, that is a very heavily used park also. Um, one of the things we see all the time is just so many kids out there, you can't find your own. You know, there's, it's just so well used. And, um, oh, and the cleanup on Remembrance Park, I, I did watch that happen. You know, it, it just kind of overgrew, and it looks great now. It's yeah, it was really a difference. It was a poor choice of plants when the park was built, and it just overgrew, and then the cars drove through it, and it was, yeah, it was a problem. So we dug all that out of there and, and planted something that's a little bit more manageable and, in my opinion, looks better. I, I think it looks sharp. You can really see the, the detail of the park, and, and people now can you know go enjoy it and take a moment and uh, look at all the features of the park. And uh, James, uh, thank you. You had some big shoes to fill coming in here, and it looks like you're, you've jumped in with both feet. And uh, thanks for that. The, some of the things that, that uh, uh, you deal with, as does road department with signs and Rusty with the parks, is the vandalism that, that we have. And um, that's just something, the graffiti and all the things that are breaking. I'm glad that you guys are on it. I see vandalism once in a while, and it's gone. So that's not an easy task in our town with all your other duties, and I'm very thankful for that. And... Um, just one thing, and you talked about all the different locks that we have, James, in, in our town. Uh, I spoke to you uh, about a couple weeks ago. Yeah. And um, how's that working out? I know that's been changed. Is it still fairly easy to use, even with the new parks and access going oh, on? Yeah, everything of the system that, that, that was implemented previously is working out really well, very easy to understand. And, um, and the locksmith that we use is very helpful. And uh, we're able to get everything we need. Good, awesome. Yeah, security is a big thing, and, and thanks for, for maintaining that and keeping it going. To all you guys, you know, excellent work. Thank you so much. Okay, again, I echo all of these comments that we've heard. I'm not going to repeat them, but I certainly feel the same way as the fellow my fellow council members. Uh, and a great report, excellent report. Again, uh, just reflects the high level of service that you guys provide to the town. We can continuously get uh, compliments uh, about the condition of our our streets and the and the parks and the facilities. We we get that. Um, most recently, uh, the the storm cleanup. Uh, I heard from people that town crews went out there and attacked it and got it promptly and uh, good job. And people people tend to. Uh, tell you what's negative uh, more than positive, but people are jumping out there giving us positive comments. Also, the the turf at uh, the concerts in the park get a lot of compliments on that. The redo over at Tri Valley Little League got a lot of compliments on that, and those are just recently that come to mind. But uh, continuously, we get we get excellent comments from the public. I do have a couple of questions. Um, do citizens, Robert, ever come and want to reclaim all that dirt, those piles of dirt that came off of their property? Uh, pretty, um, yes, a lot. They, they want to, um, they ask us to deliver dirt. We really don't deliver dirt. But what we do is we, while we pile it up and we, they call us and we say, yeah, you're welcome to that dirt. And they use it to fill erosion and that's very helpful. Um, there are some piles that we use ourselves to fill different erosion. But um, you typically we have more than we actually have to fill in. It's amazing how that works. But uh, yeah, so citizens do call all the time. And uh, I see them out backing up their trucks to the piles, shoveling it in there, and, and then they haul it away. So, so they're welcome yeah. to it? or is Yes, that, they're welcome yeah, to it. Yeah, OK. All right. The other question is uh, probably Rusty. The, the hours of the North Park restroom, is that open all the time, or is that something that's on a timer, or what? It, it's on a timer, and we basically, um, it's open at sunrise and closes at sunset. OK, OK. And that, that's the case at all the parks, the restrooms at all the parks? No, no, the, most parks close at 10. OK. And um, we, we usually leave them open a little past that. But, uh, all right. But they, they lock up at 11, usually. Okay. Okay, well, great. Thank you again, you guys, for the, for the excellent report. And this is the... Cool. 
That item is received on file, so there's no motion necessary. We'll move on to item number 10, the municipal election update. May we have a staff report, please. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I don't, well, I don't have any video or big tractors in my presentation, but hopefully it'll go quick. Um, so I, this evening, I'd like to give you a little bit of an election update on what we might see between now and November 8th for our general election. So coming up on October 4th, the registrar of voters will be delivering the voter information guides to the U.S. Post Office. And then October 10th, um, the mail ballots will go out. Um, voters can vote early starting November 11th, and I'll explain that a little bit more in just a moment. October 24th is the deadline for voter registration to vote in this election. But don't fear. Um, voters can also register and vote at polling sites. So they always want... We always want everybody to vote, and regardless. So November 8th is election day. The polls will be open 7 in the morning to 8 p.m. And there's a couple of um, good websites to, for resources, the town's website and also the San Bernardino County Elections Office. Some of the voting options that are coming up will have early voting, like we said, October 11th. And that is down in the, oh, I have to watch my fingers here. Um, that'll be down in the San Bernardino County Elections Office. And then starting on November 1st, we'll have a local, a local early, early voting site at the Joshua Tree Community Center. So it'll be helpful if somebody is out of town or just wants to get their voting done in person and get it done and out of the way. All registered voters will be receiving a vote by, mallet, vote by mail ballot again this year, this election. And there's several ways that voters can return those. They can drop it in the mail, which will be postage paid. They won't need to put a stamp on it. You can drop it off at the secure mail ballot box in front of town hall. Or they could take it to the polling location that is located on their, their ballot. So on election day, um, polling locations are open 7 in the morning to 8 p.m. And the polling locations can be adjusted with each election. It just depends on the number of voters in each area and what, is, um, what public facilities would be available. As more and more people are going to vote by mail ballots and voting that way, um, they're reducing the number of in-person uh, polling locations. The Registrar Voter has a, a great polling location lookup tool, so voters can check out to see where they will be going. For our local offices, um, we have a few things on the, the ballot. Uh, so currently, um, our local offices, we have our Town Council Districts 1, 3, and 5 this year. Other local offices, we have um, Copper Mountain College, the School District, the Healthcare District, the Water District, and the Yucca, Yucca Valley Airport District. Also on the ballot, the Town of Yucca Valley has a revenue measure, Measure K. This is the actual ballot measure um, that will voters will see and it's a yes or no vote and it gives a basic general services that would be funded and it's basically measure k would be looking to um, adjust the existing transient occupancy tax from seven percent to twelve percent that percentage hasn't changed since the town's incorporation Some more information, um, again, um, some useful websites. And the town will be hosting uh, lunch and learn workshops for voters to learn more about Measure K. And we'll have our first one tomorrow in the Choya room at 12 noon. 
Snacks will be provided, but it's kind of like a working lunch. Bring your lunch and um, we'll have a nice little chat. And um, folks can take a look at the town's website for more information and for additional um, available dates for the lunch and learns and also the um, evening workshops. And that's about it. So this recommendation is to receive and file. Thank you. Does any member of the public wish to comment on this? Seeing none, bring it back to the council for comment. Mayor Pro Tem. Yeah, I'd just like to make one comment on uh, some of the items for the town talking about the uh, district elections and, um, and Measure K while we're having events on uh, Mondays, as the clerk had said. Um, we, you can find the schedule on our website. Um, and I believe it was 12 noon when they start on Mondays. Is that correct? Yeah, 12 noon. Mm -hmm. on, on when, and those will be on Wednesdays. Uh, and then the evening workshops will be prior to council meetings between now and November 8th. Oh, on Wednesdays. Yeah. OK, yeah. I apologize. Um, on Wednesday. But one of the items <clears throat> that we mentioned, and I was thinking about, uh, just wanted to discuss it a little bit, is um, uh, Measure K. Uh, for those that are viewing and talking about that and I if the staff wanted to talk about that a little bit and review some of the items on it I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch the oh, question. I was just gonna see if we wanted to discuss anything on any of the items that we had mentioned on the slide Yeah, I would like I would like to discuss on on the measure K um, Bringing it before the voters. I think it's a really really important thing to for our voters to, to understand um, that uh, that this is necessary, like we said, that hasn't been addressed in a number of years as far as the uh, TOT type of uh, tax and so forth. Um, and I think it's important for voters to know that um, this can help generate some revenue to where we can deal with the influx of the uh, vacation rental market. Uh, things change, and, uh, and we want to make sure we can maintain uh, uh, an environment that's friendly for our residents, for people to live and enjoy their homes. And I think by um, having Measure K on the ballot, it will be an opportunity for us to be able to provide the services that are needed to help offset this impact. Um, so I would like the council to consider uh, you know, uh, supporting as a council this particular measure um, and let the public know that we feel it's really important for them to be able to uh, share their opinion and to vote on this issue. And again, that we would use these monies to help uh, with, with the impact that we have from tourism. And, and we have to understand that we don't have an industrial area. We don't have the opportunity for large corporations to come in and, and, and give us employment opportunities. But tourism is a wonderful way are providing jobs and supporting our local businesses. Uh, we're very much into our small mom and pop type of businesses and, and finding a way to bring people some traffic to their locations. And, uh, and then also all the support services that go with the vacation rental uh, market. So, you know, whether it's people that are in the building and the trade industry, whether they're cleaning, uh, whether they're providing uh, uh, management services or whatever, it really does employ a lot of local people, which is beneficial to the community and to other merchants. So I'd like to see the council perhaps share that we are in support of this particular measure so that there's no um, thoughts of whether the council uh, does does support this being on the ballot or, and so forth. Thank you, Councilmember okay. Abel. Uh, Mayor Rotem, my apologies. I'm just going to blame my lack of clarity on jet lag this uh, this evening. But oh, no, that's, uh, certainly that's fine, staff. I, yeah. I was just going to want to start some dialogue about it because it's so interesting yeah. to me and I didn't know how we wanted to start. The, uh, the town attorney may want to chime in here as well, uh, Tom, but. Uh, the council, certainly it's your discretion if you wish to uh, direct staff to bring you a possible resolution of support language, uh, and we can do that in an upcoming meeting uh, depending on the council schedule. So anything else with that, Tom, that you want to bring up? No, the, uh, the council has the uh, ability to uh, adopt a resolution in support at a, at a future agenda. I have to keep in mind, though, uh, at the uh, original meeting where this 
item was placed on the ballot by the council. There were uh, two members of the council that had conflicts of interest. So I would, uh, if you bring this item back as a resolution of support, would have to keep that in mind. And also in your discussion tonight, just recommend that you keep it at a very uh, high level discussion and keep it as short as possible. Um, if the two members with the conflicts of interest are going to participate. Okay, thank you. Can I just follow up on that sure. a little bit? Yeah, so one of the things I wanted to talk about was uh, just, uh, this is one of the things that we use strategically when we discuss our community and how we fund programs within it. And uh, we've been discussing it for quite a while, as you had heard from, uh, from the presentation, that it hasn't ever changed from the original 7% upon incorporation of the town. And we're looking today to uh, propose to Measure K, which is on the ballot and is available to view, uh, to 12%. And the purpose of that is to continue to fund any excess uh, expenses that the town incurs because of the influx of tourism a as a general 10,000 foot view. And that's from people that stay within some of the uh, hotels and motels and the short term vacation rentals of the area. Uh, those, those are additional fees upon uh, the stays of those visitors to our area, and they don't directly affect the residents of the town that use this Yucca Valley as their home. So it's not a tax that is incurred by the residents of Yucca Valley. It's primarily focused on visitors to the area that stay in some of the hosting sites for that type of tourism. Um, and what that does is it helps to uh, reduce the expense of the town on our infrastructure, on our public safety services, and in light also as the use of our facilities, which you saw through the uh, town uh, presentation today by our uh, supervisors of the different parts of our maintenance crews. And um, so it's very important for us to uh, make sure that we can create sustainability in the wear and tear of our town to keep it as beautiful as we always strive to have it. And so I'm, I'm very, uh, very excited about the potential for Measure K, and I ask all of our voters in our community to take a, a deeper dive on it and take a look at uh, what we're proposing. Councilmember Lombardo. I just wanted to make a comment. It's important to educate the, the public and the population of Yucca Valley to how this measure works and um, as, as talked about by Councilmember uh, Denison, it's a tax that's not paid directly by local residents, but by those that are traveling here to use the facilities of Airbnb or vacation rentals, hotels, motels, and that sort of thing. And it, it it's something that needs to be looked at and understood by the pop by the public. And I think when it's looked into, they'll see the logic behind why it needs to happen and. Uh, We'll leave it at that. Okay, I think we need to <clears throat> probably come to a consensus uh, as a council if we would like to adopt a resolution in support. We know that we can't advocate uh, for it. Uh, the town can't advocate for the measure, but we can support the measure. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, so and I, I don't think that's the, the discussion this evening. Is simply just get, uh, providing that direction. Staff would return that at a subsequent council meeting. Yeah, I, I would like to see a resolution um, prepared, and we can evaluate it at a later date. And I would like to ask the town attorney if mechanically uh, or logistically, how does that work if we have two members with a conflict of interest? They would simply abstain from that vote on the resolution? Right, correct. Okay, thank you. So is there a consensus among the council to... Um, uh, for a direct staff up. to bring yeah. a resolution back to us? Yes. Yes. I'm yes. in agreement. Okay. All right. Thank you. That's all we need on that? Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. We move now into future agenda items. Is there any uh, member of the council with any future agenda items in mind? I do. Really quick. Council member Droz. Um We talked about this not too long ago, but I remember we had a committee or, or something like that to look at um, dirt road maintenance, arterial dirt roads. So sometime in the near future, it doesn't have to be right away, but it would be nice to get an update on that and see if we could work on getting arterial, at least arterial dirt roads maintained. So that's all. I'd just like to see that on the future agenda. Is there a consensus on that item to bring it back? I would agree. I was approached by a local resident talking about uh, maintenance of dirt roads and 
if that was ever going to be pushed forward in the future. And I, I, I believe we talked about arterial roads and things that uh, we wanted to investigate what the cost would be and that sort of thing, make sure it's something that we can maintain and, and sustain in the future. So I, I'm in favor of it. Okay. Oh, I just want to mention that um, myself and Council Member Abel are on the maintained road system uh, ad hoc, and um, that may be appropriate to use that channel, yeah. and um, then that we can bring it back. Idea. Okay, so there's agreement on that. We'll move along to public comments. The Town Council takes this time to consider your comments on items of concern which are not on the printed agenda. When you are called to speak, please state your name and community of residence. Please limit your comments to three minutes or less. Inappropriate, inappropriate behavior which disrupts, disturbs, or otherwise impedes the orderly conduct of the meeting will result in forfeiture of your public comment privileges. The town council is prohibited by state law from taking action or discussing items not on the printed agenda. Is there any member of the public uh, wishing to make a comment this evening? Thank you, Mary. We have one request to speak by Ed Kiesling. Hello, um, I'm Ed Kiesling and I um, am a resident of Yucca Valley um, on uh, Yucca Mesa Road. And I'm here um, mostly to represent the um, Morongo Basin Culture Arts Council. And we sponsor the um, uh, annual art tour. This will be our 21st year. And uh, first of all, I wanna thank the town for um, helping us out as, as sponsors. Uh, you have a nice ad on the inside cover of our catalog. And our catalog is um, out and getting into, into the uh, distribution centers throughout the town. Um, this is the uh, front cover if you haven't seen it. Uh, we're pretty proud of it this year. Um, the other thing that um, we have in the, uh, is, uh, is a really functional map um, and Yucca Valley is in the center of the map. We have um, 57 of the uh, 192 artists on the tour. Are, uh, are 57 of the 134 studios um, are in Yucca Valley. Um, and our, uh, our tour studios cover everything from Morongo Valley all the way out to Wonder Valley and um, uh, Landers and um, Pioneer Town. So uh, we cover a pretty large area and uh, we're looking forward to a, a great art tour. I hope you'll uh, pick up a catalog. We have them out in the lobby now and um, uh, look forward to seeing you visiting a, a lot of our local artists. We have uh, 100 brand new artists this year who have not been part of the tour, and um, um, people are pretty enthusiastic, so I hope you can make it out this year. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kiesling. That's three weekends in October, right? Three, yes. three uh, weekends. October 8th and 9th through October 22nd and 23rd. Very good. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Staff reports, and well, is there any other public comment? Anybody else? Okay, we move along to staff reports and comments. Thank you, Mayor and Council. I know we're holding up the captain from getting his bags packed, but we'll let him tell you where he's going. And then you have anything else for us uh, this evening, Captain? Uh, actually, yeah, I do have a couple of public thank yous I'd like to do. First is to the local Elks Lodge here in Yucca Valley. Uh, earlier this month, they hosted a uh, emergency responders appreciation dinner. And they provided uh, dinner and a great uh, atmosphere for all of the first responders in the basin. And it was really cool to see our Deputy of the Year recognized as well as CHPs and Firefighters of the Year, Search and Rescue Members of the Year. And this was all at no cost to first responders. It was a complimentary dinner and then very reasonable for guests. So that was great of them. When I was here in 2014-15, they did the same thing. And it's outstanding that we have that kind of support in the community. So I just wanted to say thank you for them and make sure everyone was aware. Uh, the mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, I appreciate you uh, attending. That was great to see you there and it was a, a fun event. 
And then secondly, I'd like to thank the teachers down at La Contenta Middle School and the Deputies Association, uh, SEBA. We had a great event on Friday, and this is not a, a humble brag. I am, I am not a member of that association at my rank within the Sheriff's Department. I do not select the teachers. Um, basically, the Sheriff's Department Association, or excuse me, the Sheriff's Deputy Association um, does fundraising throughout the year, and obviously teachers are critically important and great partners of ours. And so we reach out to the super superintendent of county schools, and teachers at La Contenta Middle School have a great reputation. They were one of the schools selected, and our the deputy association was proud to present $2,500 worth of gift cards to directly to the teachers because we know how much money they spend out of their pockets for their classroom. So cards came with no strings attached other than spend it on your class, however you see fit, and uh, the, the students Love their teachers there, and uh, it's been a fantastic partnership. So I just wanted to say thank you to them. Thank you, Captain. You didn't talk about is it your 22nd anniversary? My wife and I will be celebrating. Well, we actually just celebrated our 22nd anniversary, and this time tomorrow I will be on the big island in Hawaii and celebrating out there. So I wasn't going to bring that up well, on a Tuesday you know, night, but thank you. We have you. to rub it in a little bit since we're not able to go, but thank you. And we do appreciate your support for the community events like that. Um, Sue or Deborah, you have anything today? September happenings in community services. Uh, the fall winter guide is coming. 10,000 copies will be distributed amongst the community. Uh, that'll be accomplished through uh, direct mail to 7,400 Town of Yucca Valley residents. Yeah. And 1,600 will be inserted into the High Desert Star uh, as well at the end of the month. And then copies will also be available at town offices and local businesses and other organizations. And of course, the publication of this guide will launch our fall winter programs, including youth basketball, holiday events, film festival, and of course the veteran celebration is uh, here this year. So that's another activity uh, that will happen this fall. Uh, we look forward to seeing the mayor at our senior center for some coffee and conversation uh, on September 28th. So thank you for booking that with us. And our new exhibit at the High Desert Nature Museum uh, opened on September 14th and in less than a week we got a article, we, a reporter showed up from the Desert Sun, and it just published today. So uh, that's great on our Postcards from Mecca exhibit, and the curator talk lecture for that is September 28th at 5.30. So thank you. Thanks, Sue. Uh, appreciate that. We'll get a copy of that Desert Sun article in your boxes for you. Shane, do you have anything this evening? Mayor and Council, just very briefly, at the Planning Commission meeting of September 13th, the Commission established pursuant to the town's short-term vacation rental ordinance, the 10% cap for the current calendar year at 771 STVR permits. Uh, currently, between those that have been approved and those that are in the pipeline, uh, we estimate that there are approximately 81 slots remaining before the town reaches that 10% cap. Um, as you can imagine, that activity level has peaks and valleys. Um, but we're estimating that approximately the end of October, we think the town may reach that 10% cap. And it could be either side of, of that timeline. Staff is preparing amendments. As the council will recall, there was a request to uh, consider amending the code to add in single family residential units in the commercial and industrial land use districts. In addition to those, there are, I believe, four other categorical area, areas where staff has identified the need to make changes, and we've scheduled to bring that back before the council at your meeting of October 18th, and that's pending keeping everything on track. Um, we do anticipate you're gonna get some different requests at that hearing. You may get requests from people to raise the 10% cap. You may get requests from people to actually lower that 10% cap because of the competitive nature of those resources that are out there today. So anyway, that's moving forward. We're close to that cap being met and we're following up with the council's direction to return the ordinance back to the council for consideration in October. That's my only item this evening, Mayor and Council, thank you. Thank you, Shane, appreciate that. Uh, Mayor and Council, you heard this evening from your public works uh, crew 
we were talking in our uh, management team meeting this afternoon about many of the different projects that we had going on and, and Shane identified uh, and highlighted just the quality staff we have and particularly the superintendents in those different areas. The supervisors just did a, do a terrific job. I think we'd be hard pressed to find three better supervisors in those respective areas in any organization uh, period. And so we, I do thank you for all your work. I appreciate that and I'm very proud to see you highlight those um, projects and programs that go on every day that are often unseen. And then I'll let you as a council talk to Robert about one of the highlights he forgot to mention about their um, striping for school. It had something to do with exploding yellow paint, but I'll let him tell you about that instead. Um, some of the follow-up comments from the council, though, uh, we do continuously look for efficiencies and improvements and how we can do things. Uh, some of those the staff is reviewing currently, and we, we may be in a position that we'll be bringing some of those back to the council for consideration in, in the near future. You saw some pictures this evening of North Park. We haven't had our official ribbon cutting. Uh, that is currently going to be scheduled by your town clerk and the entire council. Uh, we wanted to ensure that all aspects of that were done and uh, will make for a good opportunity for the council to uh, introduce that to the community. And then a great uh, idea came up in our meeting again this afternoon, and that was maybe one of the council members or somebody that you know wants to help uh, shepherd an inaugural hike on that same day that we do that. So think about that. And if you want to get your hiking shoes on, I think that'd be terrific. Uh, our Prop 68 project continues to move forward, super exciting. Um, we want to highlight that at the upcoming State of the Town uh, event, which I think the mayor will talk about uh, during his comments. But we're going to allow your HMC architect team to come out and take over one corner. We're going to highlight some of the uh, uh, most recent pictures and graphics on that. Super excited about that, and the community will be able to touch and feel a little bit of that project, see some of the visuals, maybe even have a chance to see some of the textures and materials that are being considered with that. And lastly, Council, I just uh, returned uh, today from our International City Managers Association meeting in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, next meeting, I'll have a couple of pictures for you there. I won't bore you with the details, but it's always an eye-opening experience. I think that one of the highlights was um, at different times, the council has talked about visions of an incubator business, a business incubator, another one of our old, old town area being able to serve as a place where maybe you have multiple vendors. There was kind of like all of that in, in this one project area that they had that they called the North Market. And similar to the market area in Seattle, if you've ever been there, uh, but this thing had, um, it's a pretty good sized building and it had all food, all food vendors. And it was private individual food vendors that had a space in here. And there was probably about 50, maybe 60 different types of foods, everything from Moroccan food to food from Nepal, barbecue. It was, just, it was pretty wild. So that was pretty neat. Um, and then looking at the infrastructure that supported that, you would have, I would have expected a higher level, but they still made it work. And so some of those challenges uh, to see how different communities address that was eye-opening as well. So I'll share a little bit more of that with you, but thank you for the opportunity to get out and see how different communities work, learn from others in the industry. I do appreciate that. That's it, Mayor, thank you. Okay, thank you, Curtis. Uh, Mayor and Council Member reports and comments. Start with uh, Council Member Abel. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you again uh, for the great presentations tonight. Appreciate that. Um, I am uh, the chairman of the um, uh, Mojave Desert Air Quality Management uh, Board, and we'll be meeting on Monday. And uh, we've had uh, reports of a very successful program where gas-powered small engines uh, have been replaced, and there's a, a program to where you could trade those in, old gas uh, chainsaws or lawn equipment, things like that, and replace them with uh, battery-operated equipment. As you know, more and more mandates come down on air quality, and so we're gonna see more and more of those requirements, even on the town's level, of getting rid of old gas-powered uh, lawn equipment and being replaced by battery-operated equipment. So it's a very, uh, very much a, an honor and a pleasure to be able to be the, the chairman on that board. And if any uh, member of the community has concerns about air quality uh, here in the basin uh, or uh, ac across the Mojave Desert, uh,
please contact me and let me know your concerns. I'll be glad to bring those before the board. Um, Again, thank you, Ed, for being here tonight. I'm so pleased that you were able to speak about the Highway 62 Open Studios Art Tour. It's quite a unique experience uh, where uh, art lovers and buyers can actually meet the artists in their own studios throughout the entire basin. Uh, it's a great opportunity. Uh, I've uh, spoken to, to many people, relatives that live in other communities that are art communities, and they just think it's a fantastic thing that we have here. And I've even had uh, relatives travel from out of the area to come and just experience the art tours. So again, I invite our local residents to support our local artists. Uh, there are men and women who live right here in our community that uh, that love art, that uh, produce some amazing masterpieces, sculptures, pottery, uh, all different types of uh, art uh, is presented, and you get to meet local people. It's just a great, great opportunity to, uh, to get out there and to uh, meet over 192 artists in 134 studios throughout the entire basin. And again, uh, those dates, if somebody didn't catch it, uh, three weekends, October 8th and 9th, uh, the weekend of the 15th, 16th, and the 22nd, 23rd. It runs from 10 to 5. You'll see all kinds of signs giving you directions, but the best thing to do is to pick up one of those beautiful uh, magazines uh, and, and look at the artwork. Uh, you know how some people buy these coffee table books to set on your table to, to look at? Don't throw those things away. These art uh, tour magazines are amazing and you need to keep them year round and just leave them on your your coffee table when visitors come you can show them the beautiful artists that we have locally and it has contact information so even though the art tours may be over they can still support an artist even months or years later after the tour is done they can still contact them and, and purchase some amazing art so thank you for your your group of volunteers that put this together it's huge and it's been successful for 20, you said, plus years? 21 years. 21 years. So uh, again, thank you for that uh, and I appreciate that. Um, uh, again, thank you staff and uh, thank you all for that. Um, I noticed that the town, um, the state of the town is going to have an opportunity for video. Is that uh, people can see it online uh, at a later date or live? Uh, we'll s still working out whether it'll be a live feed, but it'll definitely be available for the for the public. Yeah, because limited seating is available, so it'd be great to be able to capture that moment and be able to reproduce it on our website, or people be able to get a link to it and be able to, to see it either live or, or recorded. So, and again, uh, thank you everyone for being here tonight. Council Member Droz. Right, what an interesting meeting. That was very informative. And thanks again, Robert, Rusty, and James. We really appreciate all you do. Uh, and thank you, Ed, for being here. And Merle kind of said everything and more than I was thinking. So, so anyway, thank you. And I want to mention the state of the town address. If you go on the town website, you need to register for that. So make sure you register so we know how many people are coming. And uh, you just click on the link and see how many people are coming, and it's that easy. So um, that's it, and I hope everybody has a great uh, two weeks. Thank you. Councilmember Lombardo. I want to thank the public for allowing me to the opportunity to go to the League of Cities conference in the Long Beach, uh, along with uh, council members Dennison and schooler and that was it right mm -hmm. okay um, we had a good time there um, I always find those things interesting and informative and in my wanderings around I I uh, ran across an, an unusual company that does uh, sidewalk improvements without having to rebuild the sidewalk and when you showed me that sidewalk uh, was it Rusty that showed that right Robert did, uh, that was quite a buckled sidewalk. And <laughs> this company has a, a different way of handling it. That actually had to be blown up and, uh, and re-poured, right? But I think that we uh, may have a way to prevent those from being quite that big of an event and catch them at smaller stages when they're just starting to buckle. And uh, we, I pass that information on, and hopefully it'll be something that we can look into to see if it's a, a useful idea in the future to 
help keep the costs of repairing those things down. Um, what else? I'm glad to see that we're moving forward after COVID. I hope everybody's keeping safe, and uh, it seems that uh, it's good that we're no longer in the emergency state that we were. Um, it's it's just a relief. It, that was a big drain on everybody, I think, for a long time, and hopefully uh, we'll be able to start getting back together uh, with things like the state of the town address and the art tours and stuff will start to become back back to the community that we've always been with uh, sharing experiences and being together. And I want to thank you all for that opportunity to be part of this. Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem Dennison. Uh, thank you, Mayor. So once again, I'm just say it again. Thank you, Cruz. And um, I appreciate all that you guys do out there. Um, there's a lot of work and it never seems to end. I know that we keep uh, producing more and more uh, wear and tear, but it always looks good, and I'm very appreciative of all that. Um, also, one thing that I'm pretty excited about was, uh, once again, the town is pretty, uh, pretty excited about the comeback of the holiday craft fair uh, on December 4th. So uh, my daughter's gone there for many years, but it's not just that. It's a really a nice social activity coming into the holidays, and to see that we can finally have these events again in person uh, is a really good indication that uh, there's a lot more to enjoy in our town day after day. So I'm excited that things are opening up again. I had the opportunity to go to the Chamber Mixer at the Josh Tree National Park Association's new facility, their new location. Uh, they have a Yucca Valley location in addition to their others. So in Yucca Valley, it's on the uh, corner of Cherokee and uh, the highway. And it was what I really liked the most about it. It's probably the best mixer I've ever been into because it was such a mix of different types of people from different activities that they do. And um, a lot of times mixers become a lot of the same businesses networking. This mixer was a mixer, and it was very exciting. They had music. They had uh, great appetizers. But the best part was the socialization, which was fantastic. It really was. So um, I want to say welcome to the Josh Tree National Park Association to our town. Very exciting. And also for the chamber for continuing to work hard, even when times weren't that easy just a couple of years ago, as we talked about ending COVID restrictions in the town. We're starting to see that, and uh, the entire chamber staff did a fantastic job there. And um, uh, that's about it. Um, thank you very much. Okay, well, my, my list looks a lot like everybody else's. Um, again, thank you, Public Works staff, for the, uh, for the re excellent report and the excellent job that you do. Um, and our, our professional staff goes well beyond what we saw tonight uh, in all of the areas. I had the opportunity uh, this week, last week, to tour the animal shelter with some members of another city, leaders of another city that were coming to see what uh, first class animal shelter operated like. And uh, it was uh, led by Doug Smith, the manager up there at the shelter. Uh, and he gave an excellent tour. All the staff there was very professional, did a, did a great job. Uh, the shelter looks clean, it's tidy, it's efficient. It's, it's just really, I got the impression that, that putting that shelter together to replace the old primitive shelter that we had was, was a, more than a home run, a grand slam. It was, it's very functional and according to Doug, it serves a, a purpose and it's not like he's looking for more out of that, but they, they do so well up there and, and take care of the animals, the staff, everything's so clean and tidy and under control there. It's uh, just an excellent facility and uh, if anybody hasn't been there lately, go take a tour of the, uh, the shelter, it's, it's awesome. Um, also, uh, the Joshua Tree National Park Visitor Center uh, over in Old Town area, it's a welcome addition to the Old Town area. It's going to be a great fit. And uh, I think they open up October 1st. They'll be open, I think they said Friday, Saturday, and Sundays uh, to start with. And they're, uh, <clears throat> it's, it's just a great location, great fit. And it's great to have that presence in our Old Town area. Um, State of the town message. Several people have mentioned the state of the town um, event that's coming up on the 29th. The, there's the flyer up there. I don't have to hold this one up, uh, but it does require pre-registration. There are limit, is limited seating. So if anybody is interested, please go on the website and uh, 
be one of the first ones to sign up for that. I think uh, the first 100, 150, whatever uh, this room will hold. Uh, but you'll notice that the uh, featured guest speaker is uh, Assemblyman Chad Mays. Uh, Chad's done so much for our community, homegrown Assemblyman, uh, who has done so much uh, making possible projects that we uh, otherwise would not have had. It, it's uh, just an excellent example of uh, the benefits of having somebody from our community serve at the state level. And uh, our pool project, our aquatic center project and gymnasium, that would not be moving at all if it wasn't for Chad's efforts, as well as the fire station that uh, he's obtained funding for the replacement fire station. So uh, it'd be great to uh, hear from Chad. And in addition to our message of where the town's at and where the town is going, uh, be great to hear from Chad and uh, pay our respects for him as he leaves the assembly this next year uh, that um, he's done so much for our community. So looking forward to that one. Um, also want to point out the Miracle League uh, is in um, full swing. Uh, the first two weeks are under our belt and um, uh, it's, it's awesome. There's what, 40 or 50 participants that come out and play on Monday nights. If you've never been there or if you want to volunteer or be part of that, it's well worth doing. Uh, and we thank the fire station, the fire uh, department for supplying volunteers every week and even funding you know, for the program. But uh, it's an excellent program. It's over at Brem Park. It's on Monday evenings. Games begin at six. It's about five more weeks. So if you've never been to that, it's really worth going and seeing that. Um, <clears throat> Art tours, thank you, Ed. Uh, we're looking forward to that. Encourage everybody to go to the art tours and participate in that. And um, Captain, enjoy your trip. I don't know if they get Dodger games over there on the Big Island, but uh, you might have to do without for a week or so, huh? <laughs> okay, all right. And with that, uh, the announcements. Um, next regular meeting of the Yucca Valley Town Council will be held on Tuesday, October 4th. 2022 at 6 p.m. in the Yucca Valley Community Center Yucca Room. And with that, we will adjourn this meeting.